173rd Contact Monday, August 9, 1982, 7.30 p.m. Billy says I thought that since she is now back again, Semiazu would come today. Quetzal says after such a long absence from here and from error, she is still on vacation until the end of the month. You were already able to exchange a few words of welcome with her, which was also a concern of hers to be able to do this, which is why she first came here before she left. Billy says I understand. Then I'll just see her later. Do you have any other news? Quetzal says certainly, I have some. You know that your center has become a recreation center for us. There, we all feel very well, happy, and secure. But the center hasn't just become a resort to us but rather a true home. Moreover, you should understand my words properly, for I specifically say that it has become a true home to us, not just a spare home. We all feel at home in the center, which is why we very often spend all of our leisure time there all of us who are from error as well as all those whose home worlds are different from ours but who, nevertheless, fulfill their duties here on the earth and cooperate with us. And for this reason, I would ask you to make it clear to your group members that from now on they must be prepared every now and then to meet humans at night, in or around the center, who are foreign to the earth, and in this context there is also the possibility that light phenomena, etc. will appear if materializations of our allies occur, and so on. But there is nothing to be afraid of or to fear, for as you know, all our allies are also peaceful people, who inflict no harm on anyone or on any life form. The most that could happen would be a shock-induced defensive reaction if any group member would deliberately commit a frightening action, either for fun or out of malice, etc. In the case of an encounter with one of our allies who can endure the earth human vibrations and, therefore, do not need to be protected by invisibility, etc., it is to be declared to the group members that in such a case, they should not make any attempt to communicate but simply step aside in order to let the respective visitor pass, who will usually take no further notice of the presence of the respective group members. We and our allies come to the center in order to relax and also for the purpose of our home world, which means for all of us that no entertainment or work should be associated with it. Moreover, a conversation would be impossible in many cases because many of us and our allies do not master any earthly languages but only understand these through the use of translators, which may not be in operation as a result of a certain purpose-driven order from our home center that is connected to such a visit. Thus, every difficulty can be avoided if on the part of the group members, no attempts of contact are made, neither through any attempts of communication nor through any attempts of physical contact. This must be made completely clear to the group members because such attempts could be misinterpreted, by what means there could be a defensive reaction which, under certain circumstances, would produce rather unpleasant consequences for that particular group member if he would be struck by a paralysis vibration or by the force of a stun gun, such things finding their use among our various allies during a fright reaction. So it is fitting that neither attempts of address nor attempts of physical contact take place if there is an encounter, whether the outer appearance of the respective visitor appears to be so very human according to Earth's sense or whether it appears to be completely foreign to the Earth. Billy says I think that this should be understandable to the group members when I explain it to them. But in addition, I would like to ask you something when you say that all of you and your allies come here and that they view our center as a true home, then this would have to amount to 2,500 people, and secondly they would then be here very often, right? Isn't that a little too much traffic? Quetzal says it may be that every night they will be visiting among you because in truth, the entire number of visitors to the center amounts to 2,862 life forms. But in general, it will be such that they move cautiously, so as not to meet the group members directly. Nevertheless, chance encounters etc. can hardly be avoided. 
In addition, you must be very certain that there is order around the edifices and on the paths and roads and that no materials of any kind stand about or are lying around, as has often been the case and which has already repeatedly led to small accidents even with us. Billy says that is a right amount of people, man oh man. And if you speak of all, then that means that actually everyone comes, thus the small elves, just as also the largest ones, the middle grade ones, the luminous ones, the ones with luminous eyes, and all others. Quetzal says that is correct. The largest of our allies, Andron, is 5 meters and 26 centimeters tall according to earthly measures, and then there is Danu under him, who is 2 meters and 48 centimeters tall. The smallest ones are around 70 centimeters tall, and then there are those whose eyes illuminate very brightly and whose eyes are on the upper forehead of the skull. Billy says I know, but then there are those whose entire bodies flourish, or those whose bodies illuminate radiantly, along with those who always practice gymnastics on elevated places, such as on rooftops and trees, etc. Quetzal says that is correct. But in addition to these, there are still other variously formed life forms, but they are all of human genus and species. Billy says yes, of course, such as one, of whom someone might think that a rubber ball rolls across the ground. Quetzal says that is correct, this is also under them. Billy says then it may, indeed, be quite clear, but tell me is there perhaps, a possibility for us that we may take photographs? Quetzal says this question had to come, this we knew. Yes, you may, although, it requires a momentary bright light at night to do so. Since we already knew your question about this, we've already discussed these things. All agree to this, without exception, and they are already preparing for the fact that a short and bright light could suddenly flash if any one of you takes photos. However, it must be ensured that each time, no more than two pictures are taken with such flashing light. Billy says of course many thanks. Quetzal says special thanks are not necessary. Furthermore, I would still like to tell you that I will re-examine your financial needs until the end of this month, because when I recently devoted myself to these concerns, I made the observation that several things need to be redefined especially in reference to the contributions for the meals and for the various related services of those who do some work for those who work outside of the center. With various earthly families, I strove to gain insight into the financial characteristics of the preparation of meals and the execution of work of the mother towards her children, and I realized that in all cases, the mother's financial approaches toward preparing meals, etc. for their own children are set much higher than is the case with you. For board and dress, as well as product maintenance, etc., these cost 250 francs per month, while mothers spend an average of 500 francs in their families toward their children, but this usually doesn't even cover the costs for the mothers themselves. Having been made aware of this fact, I calculated the average monthly expenditure of the individual group members, according to which I came up with an amount of 670 francs. This is the reason for the fact that starting from the 1st of September, the respective monthly contribution must be changed to at least 360 francs for meals, etc. and 40 francs for the necessary works regarding laundry, etc. overall. The amount should be fixed at 400 francs per month and this amount is still 270 francs below the actual costs. In reference to the monthly financial contributions for the center and the mission, from now on it must be arranged that the basic contribution for each group member is fixed at a minimum of 150 francs. For married couples, if both belong to the core group, each partner is to contribute 150 francs per month so that together, at least 300 francs are provided. The minimum contribution for unmarried group members should also be newly fixed at a minimum of 250 francs per month. But for this, it must be explained that the excess amounts determined by me apply until 1985, and even surpluses beyond the minimum amounts would absolutely be useful and could find their use.
Thus, it would be nice if it was respected by the individual group members that surpluses could be given wherever possible. The entire construction of the center and the mission itself require much capital, so each additional contribution is very useful. Unfortunately, the majority payments cannot be arranged into any new and lesser amount for the time being because there are still too few group members who could make this possible through further contributions. Thus, starting from the year 1985, it could only be expected that the monthly contributions from the largest contributors can be placed on the exact same footing as those from the rest of the group members who pay lesser contributions. In reference to new group members, if conditions do not change until 1985 and no additional group members appear, then as of the 1st of January 1985, a uniform monthly contribution of about 500 francs would apply to all those who work abroad, and this would also include those group members who do not reside in the center. Basically, the center and, thus, the group will require a regular monthly amount of 7,500 francs as of the 1st of January 1985, but if possible, this should be provided by decidedly more group members than are present today so that the individuals would have to give smaller amounts. In addition, more should be acquired by all possible means, such that as of the 1st of January 1985, the center itself is utilized towards generating finances to such an extent that the group members can work there and can earn contributions that would be possible through a full-scale horticulture. But this would also mean that for all group members in the center, certain work times apply and all group members have their specific field of work. Billy says thus, we press on until 1985 to make the operation self-supporting. Quetzal says but this must actually be achieved, which will yield a lot of work, troubles, and worries, if this is possible at all. Billy says this is clear but we can do it, as long as everyone provides the necessary commitment. Quetzal says with the necessary commitment of each group member, it should actually be possible. Billy says your word in the group member's ear. Quetzal says certainly, every single group member isn't just working for the community, for the center, and for the fulfillment of the mission, but each group member also works for himself. One day, it should be possible that each core group member will have a firm and almost free residence and home in the center even if it presently can't be the case. But in the coming time, it can be made possible, and this time, it can be reached much faster than each group member is able to imagine in his own mind. But for this, it is absolutely necessary that full utilization is provided in each line by every single group member, referring to the joyful labor input and the necessary performance and the correct organizational handling of different works, as well as in reference to the multiple financial contributions and the study, etc. Indeed, many objectionable things have taken a turn for the better in the course of time, but there are still deficiencies that require a rather speedy improvement. But on the whole, truly good successes have been observed recently, even if these, unfortunately, result more from coercive measures than from voluntary means. And just in this respect, an important negative matter must be reported several group members, especially those of the male gender, entertain in their minds the very mistaken view that is hostile to the community of interests that with the date of October 4th, if we will be willing, under the circumstances, to continue the contacts, then they would no longer have to be so anxious to fulfill their daily duties in the center or to cooperate and live, etc. in accordance with the ordinal rules. Different ones maintain the notions that they could then be absent again repeatedly, and if possible, they would only meet the mandatory duty of eight hours per month. But this is an attitude and a reasoning that is irreconcilable with the fulfillment of the mission and with the construction of the center because such thoughts and actions would, once again, lead to the old state of things in the shortest time. Even if we may, perhaps, reach a positive decision on the 4th of October, 
which hasn't been decided yet and, thus, isn't absolutely certain, it can never mean that from this date, the same old neglect of duty and neglect of commitment can again possess validity because only full commitment in every direction and in all emerging concerns can lead to a success. A true and honest group member can very well cultivate and maintain the most diverse personal interests and desires, etc., but first and foremost, he should and must place his interest in the fulfillment of the mission in the foreground and in his main train of thought, and only then can and may his self-interests, in personal matters outside of the task, appear. For this, it should also be explained that it is, indeed, right that loving contact is maintained with personal family members, like with parents and siblings and relatives, and also with friends and acquaintances. But in this regard, the earth person exaggerates his deeds and actions because he combines too much in this direction, by what means he too often lives with the former domestic herd with parents, siblings, friends, and acquaintances, and through this, he retains his lack of independence, which he brings with him from childhood. But due to frequently living in the hearth and home, the person doesn't become independent, and moreover, this close relationship means that with the death of personal family members, relatives, friends, and acquaintances, much unnecessary and illogical sorrow emerges, which could be avoided by a reasonable amount of living with these people during their lifetimes. Ties of this kind necessarily must be limited by the earth person, through which the person becomes more independent. At the latest, if the earth person has reached an age that can be considered to be adulthood, then he should leave hearth and home in order to become independent and life steady outside of this area, and each year, he should not visit the former home any more than two to four times. But if the person acts contrary to this, then he neither loses his dependence nor the search for protection among his own family members. In the same measure, the growing up of the person is delayed by such a false action as also self-pity and self woe are constructed, which only come about because he is constantly looking for external protection usually with his parents, siblings, relatives, friends, and acquaintances because even seeking protection is itself dependent and doesn't detach itself from this dependence. Thus, it is recognized from this that a maudlin and self-pitying person never becomes independent and always has to rely on the assistance of others, and one usually searches for this assistance, though often unconsciously, where the hearth and home once were, thus with the parents, siblings, friends, and acquaintances. But now, if there are those who live together in family units at the center and even if adult children still live with their parents, then that is an entirely different case because through the study of the teachings, etc. and through the type and manner of freedom and coexistence, these negative dependencies are slowly but surely removed, by what means they already exert only small influences. So an entirely different case appears here which can find no comparison with those who search for protection in their degenerated connections to their former hearth and homes, making them long for as well as visit their former homes more frequently than what is envisaged and good for them. But the fact is that the more independent one is and the more one correctly lives, thinks, acts and feels in accordance with the creation, the more he goes his own way, away from his parents, siblings, friends, and acquaintances, who belong to his direct sphere of life during the first two decades of his lifetime. Everything in accordance with the creation is so fine and well organized that all life forms become completely independent after a certain period after birth as it can be observed directly and as a trend with animals. And in particular, a person should act in accordance with this because as a cogitative life form, he can be and should be more far-sighted and more logical than the animals. Billy says there, you bump into deaf ears with the people of the world. Quetzal says I know that unfortunately but I felt a need to discuss these issues once, just like the other matters that also fall into this area. Everything rests in the type and manner of upbringing namely in forms of education that can be bestowed upon a person during his youth, but also those in which one can instruct himself. 
the less a human life form practices absolutely necessary self-education and only indulges in educational forms that are assigned to him by his parents, etc. During his period of youthful aging, the more dependent this life form remains or becomes. If a life form is given an education from the outside, such as through parents, etc., then after and during this upbringing, self-education is necessary, in the same proportion as if no outside education was given at all. But now, if a person omits this self-education, which is often the rule with the earth people, unfortunately, then the person in his entire lifestyle and quality of life resembles exactly that which is in accordance with the outside education received. But this means that the person remains life unsteady and lacks independence, and he even steadily becomes more so, to some extent. Then, the necessary self-awareness and insights are missing, by what means the person isn't able to control his own sorrows and invading pains of all kinds, and he cannot bear them, so he falls prey to a self-woe and a self-empathy, which you call self-pity. If the person, in his youth, leaves hearth and home under such circumstances, then he also remains shy outside of this former home, being caught up in all of the instilled dependence that is controlling him, if he does not immediately take his self-education to hand, in order to shape his own way of life in accordance with his truth. But the possibility of experiencing one's self-education is already destroyed by this if a youth leaves home in order to marry and then starts his own family, without previously allowing the necessary time for his self-education to be bestowed. Concerning this, our detailed studies have shown that with respect to the earth people, at least seven years are required for a basic self-education once a youth leaves home and enters among those earth people who are so-called strangers. In addition, it is necessary that these seven years are fundamentally used, after which the earth person then first attains the necessary knowledge and insight toward independence. But before this independence has been attained, the earth person commits the basic mistake of searching for a partner, either for marriage or simply for the satisfaction of sexual desires. This, then, usually leads to the fact that relations received in such a way are neither permanent nor are correct and that as a result of this, offspring originate who neither enter into the world at the right time and according to destiny nor are able to shape their lives to become independent and to live and evolve in accordance with the truth. Billy says these connections are known to me, but making this understandable to the people of Earth, that is almost an impossibility. Also, it might be very difficult to explain why in our community, different laws prevail in connection with this because descendants don't necessarily have to move away from home in order to become independent in the truest sense of the word. Quetzal says I know, but the truth of this is simply that in your community, the true truth is presented and is pursued slowly but surely, whereby the necessary changes take place there, and the people reach independence, even if this takes a long time. Nevertheless, it is necessary for every single group member and for every single descendant member that in accordance with the teachings, they incorporate themselves into this voluntarily and knowingly and then begin to live accordingly. This, then, will automatically lead to success, which cannot fail. Interestingly enough, it must be emphasized that it isn't the females of the group who have to take the more difficult path of evolution in this connection but rather the males. On the whole, they are the ones who are of greater dependence, self-pity, and self-woe, and who have a greater lack of interest and initiative, and they are also of persistent unemployment and instability, which is why unjustified changes of jobs appear among them again and again, but also unnecessary absences from work because they lack a sense of initiative and interest in work. The slightest occasions, as for example some griping or a little feeling of nausea, lead with a greater part of the group members to the fact that they feel ill and miserable and, therefore, will stay away from work. A small insect bite or an oppressive stone in the shoe already leads one to suppose that he was the victim of a serious accident, which is why work, then, isn't resumed. 
Concerning this, the self-pity and self-woe of many group members are unusually strong, such as with Silvano, Bernadette, Freddy, and Thomas, while some improvement has been achieved in recent years with Jacobus in this connection, but not yet in full requirement. In this respect, even your wife has worked extremely well into an improvement which is particularly pleasing with her because her self-woe and her self-pity had long been repulsive. Also in regards to speedy work and the organization of its aspects, the lack of independence of the most diverse group members leads to results that are deplorable. In particular, Jacobus, as a work manager, should finally learn to organize speedily and likewise to work. He goes much too far with the various complicated and, thus, extremely time-consuming works, by what means no notable and satisfactory results are achieved. When I watch him now and then in his activities, I am filled with holy wrath, whether it's with the so much complexity or the lack of productivity. Billy says you tell me nothing new, and I have already spoken with him many times about this. Quetzal says this is well known to me. He probably works very well but unproductively and not speedily. His daily fatigue of his body doesn't result from a true day's work but rather from an unproductive, non-speedy, and complicated work approach. If he would work straightforwardly, speedily, and productively, then in truth, at least three times the work achievement would exist. But this is also true, in some sense, for the others, wherein for this and for the aforementioned, Louis is also included. Their work methods are so complex and unproductive, as if they were incapacitated old men. The work and interest as well as the employment of the male group members often appear to me as if they were inmates of an old folks home, in which there live only old, soft, and pitiful people who are oversensitive to pain and who have no initiative. They always give me the impression that they belong to a disinterested club in an old folks home, filled with soft, decrepit and querulous old men who have no initiative. This is a fact that is incomprehensible to me and that is extremely deplorable because I have the opportunity to compare these group members to our old people and old men, with whom such incidents are inconceivable. Even our oldest people yield much more initiative and true employment in all concerns and in manual labor than what is the case with these young and energetic group members. The least of all those of our old men still accomplish at least twice as much as these young and strong group members who feel ill and miserable if they are touched by a gentle gust of wind and stay away from any work and commitment, so that they can secretly rejoice eo dem tempore equals in the same instant about the fact that they can keep themselves away from every work and commitment by a trick. Billy says there will be few who will be happy about your words. Quetzal says my words shouldn't be an occasion for joy but rather a stimulus for them to recognize their mistakes and shortcomings and a stimulus to make them truly valuable valuable in their entire useful life and in their commitment. But that should now be enough for today, and concerning these things, I will explain more to you in our next meeting. Until we meet again. Billy says bye, and loving greetings to all. The End